Hey, what's up guys? Sawyer here from Techie Grad. So this won't come as a surprise to most, but the Google Pixel XL was selected as our top phone of 2016. But now that it's 2017, is it still a worthy contender? Let's find out. So first, let's talk about the reasons of why the Google Pixel XL was our top phone of 2016. Well, I think that the reason why most people choose the Google Pixel over other phones is that it's just so reliable. You know, there's no one fatal flaw in it that will cause you to not want to buy it. It's got a pretty good build, good battery life, and it's Android the way that it was meant to be, which is stock, so it's really fast. However, if there's one fatal flaw that I can think of with this phone, it's not something that Google did, but it's what they didn't do. 2016 was a time when a lot of companies took risks with their phones. So Samsung did their edge displays right finally. I know that they had the Note Edge before, but let's be honest, it really wasn't all that great. LG made it so that you could slide a battery out on the bottom of your phone, even when it was an all metal build. And Motorola had probably the craziest year where they made it so that you can literally attach anything under the sun onto the back of the phone and increase functionality exponentially. However, when thinking about the Google Pixel, it really didn't have any of these fancy features that these other phones had. But when thinking about the Google Pixel, there really were no risks taken, and Google took the easy way to success. I'm not saying that that's a problem, because obviously the phone was successful, but I think that 2017 will be a year in which companies are going to have to be a bit more creative with their phones. So I think that a good thing to do in this video is compare the rumors of 2017 tech to 2016's best. Starting off with design, like I said, the design of the Google Pixel XL is probably the least interesting part of the phone. While it's all metal and feels really nice in the hand, that's all it is. Recently we've seen some designs of what 2017 phones might look like with the Xiaomi Mi Mix, and I know it came out in 2016, but this phone looks incredible. It has a giant 6.4 inch display, and its footprint is only a little bit bigger than that of the Pixel XL, and that's because of these extremely small bezels on it. So I think that regarding the designs of phones, the main cutting edge thing that we'll see in 2017 is very small bezels. Next up is battery life, and in this category, the Pixel XL honestly does very well. It can get about 4 hours of screen on time, which on its own is impressive, but I think is even more impressive is the standby time. You can leave this phone uncharged overnight and turn it on the next morning to only lose about 1 or 2%. Keep in mind though, this isn't the thinnest phone in the world, but personally I'm a fan of companies sacrificing thickness for battery life. Now, battery life is something that doesn't often see major improvements, so expect slightly better battery life in 2017 phones, but nothing too crazy. Now onto software, and this is where the Pixel XL shines brightest. Because it's made by Google, it's Android the way that Google intended it to be, and that means that it's really fast and can handle multitasking and other intensive tasks like a champ. Again, software is also something that doesn't see any huge improvements too often, so don't expect anything major in 2017. As most people know, the Google Pixel and Pixel XL have the best smartphone cameras that we've ever seen. Basically, in every category that you need in a good camera, you know, the low light capabilities, the HDR plus pictures, the sharpness, the colors, the Google Pixel does a good job. And while some small upgrades could be made that we'll probably see in the next generation of the Pixel, smartphone cameras have been almost perfected, keeping in mind the small sensors they have. The reason why you can never expect DSLR quality photos out of smartphones is because of the small sensors they have compared to the full-size camera, but smartphone cameras have definitely gotten really good. Most phones that were released this year, excluding the Google Pixel, had one defining feature about them that made them unique from the crowd. Like I said, the S7 Edge had the Edge functionality, the Moto Z series had its modularity, and the LG G5 had a bit of modularity. But the Pixel didn't have anything like this, and I think of this as both a blessing and a curse. The reason why that's bad is pretty obvious, it just takes away functionality and doesn't give that futuristic factor that those other phones had. But the good part about this, like I said, it doesn't really have any major flaws about it. So for example, on the S7 Edge, because of that Edge functionality, the phone was not durable whatsoever and was kind of uncomfortable to hold. And on the LG G5, with that extra battery function, the phone overall was just kind of a flop. And with the Moto Z series, some of the phones in the series had pretty bad battery life, and the Moto Mods sucked away a lot of battery life from the phones, and also the Moto Mods in general were a bit expensive to get into. So I think what this means is that the Google Pixel XL was a near perfect phone for 2016, but for 2017, Google needs to keep all the good things that are already in the phone, but add a few more interesting things to spice it up a bit. 
Now, what will this big defining feature be? Well, I think that for 2017, a lot of companies are gonna be putting fingerprint scanners into the actual displays of the phones, not like a separate button. And there's already been some rumors that Apple may do this for the iPhone 8. And also, Xiaomi recently came out with a phone, the Mi 5S and Mi 5S Plus, that do have these ultrasonic fingerprint scanners. Another thing that I think will be ramped up in 2017 is personal assistance. And we all know that Google already has Google Assistant, which is already really good. But I think that what we'll see this year is a lot more fluid conversation and personality in these assistants. So in conclusion, I still would strongly recommend the Pixel and Pixel XL to anybody looking for a fast, reliable phone. But in 2017, I do think that we'll see some pretty crazy phones. That's gonna wrap up our video on the Google Pixel and Pixel XL. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content from TechieGrad. As always guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.